Alright, this is my 2015 Toyota Tundra 4x4 SR5 trim. This is my personal vehicle for pleasure and work. And I'm going to go and give you my honest review of what it's like owning it and driving it on a regular basis. So, I'm going to go ahead and start first with the outside, show you around what different things on this truck are. Uh, I want to first point out that this truck, I believe, is actually lifted a little bit on, you know, on both sides. As you can see, and also the tires are a bit more beefier. And let me tell you, these things got some grip. Uh, and actually, also these are aftermarket wheels. I don't think these are factory wheels. Um, the salesperson told me these are factory wheels because it's a special trim. I knew he was lying from the get-go. But anyway, some extra things on the outside of the truck are this bed cover. Uh, this is a six-foot six inch I think just over six feet long bed and right inside here if you have a look it has bed liner sprayed in very rugged and heavy duty this is where I pull out my tools for work all right coming back around here I'm gonna show you the back here Got with the hitch, you know, three balls here for different sizes. Two inches, I think two and five sixteenths, and then a smaller one. All right, you got a camera up right up here. When you're backing up, this is a very long truck, longer than my you know, previous Nissan Frontier, so it can become a challenge to back this thing up uh, or park it in certain spots. So going back around here, going towards the front, Nothing too special here, um, except for people drilling holes for, I guess, front license, uh, front license plate uh, holders. Florida, there's no front plates, so don't know why they did that. But anyway, got a little bit of chrome here. It gives it a nice touch. I know it's right above the SR trim, which I believe SR is like the most base you can get. You know, the chrome definitely makes it a more premium look. Um, so. With all that being said, let's go ahead and hop on inside and have a look of look at the interior. Now this truck has a standard key fob as you can see right here. Right here. So it's an old school key and remote control, which nowadays that's considered old school. So having a look at this, the trim here, it's a lot of hard plastics and some soft touch plastics. Um, you know, all in all, it looks pretty well built. Um, you get cloth seats. I got seat covers on my truck, uh, as well as a steering wheel cover to protect, you know, the things I touch most. Um, you got side steps here. Definitely helpful, especially for my wife. Let's go back to the back seat. And right here is where, you know, the... Uh, back seats actually go down but I'll leave these up because I don't really have anybody in the back seats um, I usually put a lot of tools here this right here is actually like uh, extra storage you can put stuff inside close it and the other side does the same thing um, you got 12 volt outlet right here I use this to charge my tools and you got a cup holder right there And if you look well inside, you can see the center window slides open. Uh, it's not automatic, it's manual. You gotta do it. Uh, let's have a look how you do it. Like that, and then close it. So we got that out of the way. Nothing fancy in the back seat. Let's hop back in the front. And have a look inside here. So you got entertainment system right here. Looks pretty nice. I think way better than the previous generations. You got a six-speed automatic transmission. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's I think it's a little clunky in my opinion, but uh, I believe these things are pretty uh, long-term 
uh, you know, trucks. So I think that's totally fine. Yeah, well, there you got glove box. And the armrest that opens up with a 12 volt outlet inside. You got things inside here, on the side here, like uh, mirror adjusters. This is for the dome lights, I believe. You can adjust your headlights up and down, especially if you have like a full load, uh, you know, say pulling a trailer. The truck will be, will be tilted on the front end upwards, so you might be blinding some people, so you can use these to adjust them back down. This is for the rear bed light. You can, you know, have it off or on or right in the middle. E-brake right here, as you would expect. And, um, yeah, a lot of manual buttons, which is actually really nice. A lot, really good tactical feel with these um, controls, and they feel really well. They feel good quality. Okay. Let's turn the AC off. We got 40,307 miles. And, um, driving this truck around, pulling a trailer and doing drives without a trailer, I average about 10.2 miles per gallon. Not very good. So let's go and crank her over and have a listen. Now this is a 5.7 liter V8, and I believe it's rated for, I think, 17 to 19 on the highway, and like 13 to 14 in the city, but I just driving around um, on the highway with these tires and being lifted up a little higher. Uh, I think I'm getting maybe 16 if I'm if I'm trying to be around 65 miles per hour. 70, 75 miles per hour, I'll be, I think at a solid 15 miles per gallon, pulling nothing with just me in the truck. So uh, not great, but again, it is a big full-size pickup truck. Um, the full tank. Uh, at least for me, from like 10 miles to empty to full, it is like 21 gallons and some change, 21.5, uh, which at these fuel prices right now in, uh, in May 2022, cost me around $90 to fill up. Um, so, let's talk about the engine note. Let's have a listen in the back. It's a stock uh, exhaust, so go ahead and go back there and uh, put next to the exhaust system. Sounds somewhat aggressive, especially actually on the inside for a stock exhaust system. Um, you definitely feel it reminds me, if I could put it into any words, it's like a V8 Honda with a VTEC. Once you go past a certain uh, amount of RPM, it almost feels like a VTEC kicks in and makes a slightly different tone, uh, almost like a very throaty to uh, tone. For a V8, it sounds really good. Um, you're gonna hear that uh, in a little bit once you get on the road. So um, lastly, let me cover a few other things I forgot to mention and we can start driving. For an SR5, you've got adjustable front seats. I believe the side is manual, right? Mm -hmm. Passenger side is all manual, right? Mm -hmm. No automatic adjustments. That's to be expected for an SR5 trim. In terms of radio and what kind of sound system you have here, it's nothing fancy. You can adjust the bass and get a little bit of a kick. It's um, actually pretty decent. I'd say it's probably a little better than my Nissan Frontier, which I thought was actually pretty good for being a bass model. Um, there's no uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay to here. This is 2015 base model um, radio. In fact, I think even the highest trim didn't get those things. They had navigation, but uh, not the Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. This doesn't have any of those things. But all in all, as a radio, it looks good. Um, the touch sensitivity is very good. And you know, you got your USB ports here, your aux down here, and um, you got Bluetooth and XM radio and all those things. So you got pretty much all you need for, you know, all your radio needs. And by the way, since I do junk removal full time, um, I haul a trailer every single day pretty much. And um, this truck does have 
tow haul mode down here. So whenever you press this button here, a little yellow light up here comes up and you'll be able to, you'll be able to, um, the truck will start shifting um, at higher RPMs. So you can kind of keep the, the power band higher and you'll be able to, of course, you know, haul things easier. Of course, it's gonna sacrifice fuel economy, but you'll be able to have a, make the truck work a less hard to haul things around. And I actually tow a 2,500 pound dump trailer. Uh, that's actually 2,500 uh, pounds empty. Uh, when it's fully loaded, it ranges from 25, from 4,000 to 6,000 pounds fully loaded uh, in total. So um, it definitely puts on a strain on the truck, but I think at around 10,500 pounds of towing capacity, the truck almost doesn't even, doesn't even feel it. So um, it's a great truck if you want to tow things with. Travel trailers, uh, utility trailers, um, anything like that, dump trailers, this truck can do it for you pretty easy. Uh, don't go overboard, you know, don't be towing a tank, but you know, something within reason, you're gonna have pretty much no problems. So um, now that I got everything out of the way here, Am I missing anything here? That's it, all right. So let's get on the road and see how this truck drives. You know, one of the things I was so surprised about is the turning radius. If you have a look here, I'm gonna go straight and I'm gonna turn all the way this way. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but the turning radius on this truck is so freaking good. It, it turns like a freaking short wheel base little tiny car. You could go in circles on a dime, on a little penny. It's so amazing. Uh, Nissan Frontier couldn't do that. It was a smaller truck with a shorter wheelbase. So let's go up here. The closest thing I can, I can describe this car sounds like is a V8 Lexus. Yes, the Toyota and Lexus are the same thing. I'm sure they have a lot of similarities in their V8 model de uh, designs and their exhaust system you know, uh, designs. Uh, but my friend a long time ago had a Lexus ISF, sporty, you know, essentially equivalent to a BMW M3. And that V8 sounded very beautiful. And whenever I step on this, step down, you know, full throttle on this truck, it sounds very much like the Lexus ISF. So, that's a nice plus. Uh, so, all in all, um, that's all I got for you guys. This is pretty much the review of my Toyota Tundra. It's a great truck for work. Um, my wife loves it, which is a nice <laughs> bonus. Um, this is a great everyday driver, if you don't mind paying the extra dollars for gas. Um, and um, it's gonna last you a long time. Uh, I just, these things hold value generally much more than like a Dodge Ram or a Chevy Silverado. Um, so go out there, test drive one, and see if you like it yourself. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.